Everyone and welcome back to the electric supercar channel. This week we're going to tear down and strip apart this Nissan 300ZX. Let's get to it. For today's sponsor we have the 70My dash cam A800S plus rear cam set. I should be a pro by now but we've got the forward facing camera, rear facing camera. This one will go from the camera in the front to the camera in the back. This one is your power cable. So we'll pick a car and see if we can install it. All right, we did another great installation. Again, the main camera is right behind the rear view mirror. Let's power it on and check it out. The A800S has 4K ultra high definition resolution. It has dual channel recording and is available with 24 hour smart parking surveillance. It has a built-in GPS with ADAS. The front camera has a 140 degree field of view and has the Sony IMX415 sensor that processes frames faster to deliver images with better clarity and vividness. The A800S also uses a F1.8 aperture with night owl vision. It really gives astounding low light performance. If you're in a market for a dash cam, this is a great value. I will leave a link in the description below. All right, we are diving back into the Nissan. My goal is to get all the excess wires, tubing, hoses, and things clear of the motor bay here. And this is, I think, eventually where a lot of the batteries are gonna be. So the engine wiring harness, I wanna get rid of I'm not exactly sure how. So, you know, I put the battery back in. I still need to test systems in the car, but I think there's gonna be, I'm gonna call them live wires, meaning wires that have 12 volts, some wires that are ground, and I just think if I clip it, anyways, that just doesn't seem like the right way to do it. So I'm gonna think about it, but in the meantime, I'm gonna do systems check. I wanna check all the systems. So I think I've got a pretty good list. Headlights, turn signals, brake lights, horn, windshield wipers, power mirrors, power door locks, windows, and interior light. So we'll check those real quick. You can help me. I should also mention we took out all the fuses that we thought were related to the engine and kept everything else. Right away, the interior lighting is working. I can verify the stereo. Yeah, the stereo's working. So let's start, okay, these are park lights. Headlights, brights, these are fog lights. Do blinker. Oh, that's interesting, it's going fast. Blinker, yep. Brake lights, horn, windshield wipers. This actually has back windshield wiper. Yep. Power windows, check. We got power mirrors. All right, now that we've got a good baseline of all the systems, we're gonna remove as much as we can. All right, here I took off the front fenders so I could gain access to some of the wiring that runs to the cabin from the engine bay. All right, I promise we're making progress. It just is going really slow. So there are three of these lines. I'm gonna call them kind of vacuum lines. All right, so there's a green line that is brake line, and then these other kind of silvery lines are not. They're just kind of vacuum lines. They go back to kind of where the fuel tank was and stuff. So I'm gonna get all those out, and I gotta still finish up cleaning all the wires. And man, it is just amazing how many wires are required to run a car. So here we are just trying to figure out which wires go where and which ones we can remove. So doing some cleaning that's before it's after. So next up is we're gonna take out the brake master cylinder and brake booster. Um, first, I'm just gonna bleed the brake. So I'm just gonna do it right down here. So basically right there, I had to do a quick shop clean. 
I found one of my 10 millimeters. All right, I was able to get tube on there. So we're slowly draining. All right, not the best looking brake fluid, but uh, we've got most of it bled out. I'm sure there will be continual dribbles as we remove the rest of the system. All right, I'm getting into the footwell of the passenger on the Nissan. So there's one panel here. There's kind of one screw holding it on, the rest of it kind of popped off. Then there's this one, which is a wood panel, Velcro to the carpet. And so now this is the automatic transmission module. This is the ECU. So we're gonna take both those out just because right now it, I think they're supplying lines in the engine bay with power. So when these are out, hopefully that means that we don't have any more live wires in the engine bay. All right, there's one underneath it. That is the power steering control unit. Because we took out the engine, we also don't have the power steering pump. So I think this whole unit is also not gonna be valuable to us at this time. We're gonna do a different power steering setup. All right, we are uncovering more. That is the cruise control modules. We'll take that one out as well. All right, there is one more up there, but it is a passenger or passive seat belt, something or other. So we're gonna leave that one. But the rest of these, I think we'll, we'll check, make sure all the other systems are working and then we'll probably cut and pull these wires out. I don't know if this is where I was going, but I'm deciding that this is now what I need to do. So besides just getting all the wires, I need to get to the heater core and basically a lot of things under the dash. So I think I'm gonna try to take out a lot of the dash. And this is one of the main reasons why I actually started YouTube. You can imagine how hard it would be to try and remember where all these bolts went or how you took things apart. For me, YouTube started as an unlimited external hard drive. All right, here is the destruction. Glove box has had kind of two bolts under there, a couple kind of side brackets. There's a frame that went around here, just lots of bolts all around. Yeah, this is kind of, I'll say, typical interior stuff where if you knew how to do it, it'd go way faster. So, I mean, once it's done, it's like, oh yeah, that's not too bad. But uh, figuring out the first time, somewhat challenging. So I got this side done. We're gonna go over and take off the steering wheel, steering column, all that stuff on that side. Sometimes it's just pop out. Oh, just like that. As you can see, there are just a ton of fasteners. I usually get a handful of Ziploc bags and put the fasteners in a bag for each section. So like dash or steering column. this plastic thingy, this other plastic thingy. Yeah, it is truly amazing. All the hardware, all the, I can imagine just all the engineering that goes into this for all the vents, all the cooling, heating. 
as well as just putting everything together. Every single connector is different and every single connector is a challenge to figure out how it comes apart. Some of the goals on the interior is to take off the brake pedal as well as the brake booster. Um, we are going to be using a Tesla uh, electric assisted brake system. The gas pedal as well, we need to switch that out with one that can work with our Tesla system. And like everything, in order to get to these, we have to undo just about everything. The gauge cluster is also something we will not be using anymore, as most of its information comes from the engine, which we will not have. So yeah, there's lots of places just where the original OEM plastics just cracked. And I'm sure that's just, you know, 30 year old plastic. Up here on the dash, it's really raised and things. So hope everything kind of stays somewhat in one piece as I take it out. or also the steering column. We need to figure out how to make this a electric assisted steering column. So we got uh, lots of stuff out of the passenger footwell, a lot of stuff in the driver side. I'm thinking that I might still need to take the dash off. I need to get to like the heater core and the AC condenser. I gotta get uh, some of those things out as well and they're kind of buried deep. So we now have everything out. Probably remove a lot more wires, especially kind of from the dash area. But this is where we're gonna end it for now. All right, here's what it looks like after a little bit of cleaning, some elbow grease. Could not do quite as fancy as like dry ice. I don't have the money, but it looks really good. Again, we're able to kind of route those cables out of the way pretty nicely. And one of the biggest challenges was to get rid of all the wiring harness for the engine, because even when we took out things like the ECU, the transmission module, there were still lots of live wires and I didn't want to just cut them. So we kind of had to undo a lot uh, to figure out where all the wires go. And then we were able to remove the ones we didn't need, but keep all the ones we did. So yeah, it's looking really good. All right, we were able to get a lot done. We took out so many wires, got things nice and clean, stripped to the bone. Now it's time to build it back up. So stay tuned for the next one. See you next time.